Welcome to the Resolve.ai webinar series. Before we get started, let us quickly go over a few housekeeping items. We love interactive events, so please feel free to ask any question in the Q&A section, which can be accessed at the bottom of your screen. We'll answer those questions towards the end during the Q&A session. If there are more questions than we can answer during the session, we'll get back to you, we promise. This webinar is being recorded and a recording link will be shared after the event. Thanks again for joining today, and let us get today's session started and welcome our host. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to the session. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. It's a global space, so people join this webinar from all the time zones. Uh, I'm your host, Manish Sharma, and today we'll be talking about AI-based architecture uh, for service desk and employee support. Um, why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about architecture? Because the architecture is clearly changing right now between, um, uh, you know, there's a big transition underway from the architecture that was and the ar architecture that is going to be. And it is implication for all of us. A um, lot of us service desk managers, um, CIOs, CTOs, um, uh, you know, people who are responsible for employee experience, uh, it matters to us. We need to kind of plan out, um, you know, how we are going to play this uh, in next one, two, three years, depending on what happens uh, in, the, in the transition. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So before we even go to the architecture, let's talk about employee needs. Uh, someone might ask why are we talking about employee needs when, when the session was supposed to be very techy um, architecture based session. Uh, but the thing is, eventually architectures serve people, architectures serve employees, architecture serves customers. So, you know, you cannot create a new architecture or fathom the need for a new architecture unless until you look at what is happening with the employees, the people that it is supposed to serve. So let's just spend a few minutes there. Um, obviously, you know, and by the way, this is my favorite quote. Someone said this in LinkedIn, and I took their permission to re replicate this. Uh, <clears throat> but what she said was that there are perks like foosball table and catered food, et cetera, et cetera. They used to matter a lot earlier. But in the year that we are in, 2021 and beyond, there are other things, other things that will be considered bells and whistles. And, and those things will be tech and flexibility and how, how easy it is for people to work in, 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 in the in office. How do they feel productive? You know, things of that nature. I just love that quote because it kind of captures what is happening uh, around us and uh, the things that we need to react to. You know, employees, if you look at it, they want to, a lot of, a lot of us are still working from home. I'm working from home um, and, and some of you might be. I know many people have started working from office, which is great. I cannot wait to start uh, working from office myself. But um, while this partial home, partial work is going to continue, looks like for some time, people still want to feel productive. They, they're working on something, they want to get it accomplished. 
they don't want to deal with enterprise friction by the way enterprise friction is a is a term that we have coined to um, kind of denote what happens when you're trying to get something done but you cannot do it due to various reason you don't have access to that you don't understand something you don't have access to the right person your laptop is you know whatever the issue might be but all of those issues which just stop you from doing what you're doing we call that enterprise friction so so when you're working in a remote environment especially and and you're dealing with enterprise friction that can be pretty tough and finally you know i think there is a need for people to feel less isolated right like um, we are feeling isolated all of us so how do we reduce that isolation that's also kind of you know part of the things that are in employees mind uh, and therefore in reaction to this what is happening in service desk is also changing right service desk is changing to what employees feeling but also changing to what what is happening all around us because the context is changing the context in which we live is changing so the old service delivery model all of us know what it was it is it was very simple employee had a travel you know we tell them go create a ticket they don't want to go create a ticket in the ticketing system because they hate it um, they instead make a phone call or they write an email the email is incomplete now we have to go back and chase them and say hey you you send me an email but it seems to be you know i don't understand your issue and then the back and forth begins between the employee and the service desk at some point during this interaction employee really gets frustrated and forms an opinion rightly or wrongly about the service desk saying i i don't like that interaction and that is bad news for all of us who are in service desk industry so this was the traditional model i have not even captured things like how the ticket might go from l1 to l2 to l3 whatever right those kind of complexity i'm not even talking about but i'm talking about the basic uh, you know service delivery model that exists today for most part but employees uh, over a period of time they are showing that they want they are not happy with this right and couple of things that we kind of picked up along the way is employees are saying we will much rather prefer an integrated service desk that means you know don't send me here for hr i for it you know uh, go somewhere else for finance go somewhere else facility nobody knows right like don't don't give me that kind of situation if i'm working remotely provide me with a single simple interface to connect to all the service desk right why why do i need to go to 15 different places to get help so that is one thing that we are finding which has changed um there's clearly a voice of the customer there second thing is that everyone is using collaborative tools much more than they were using earlier so you must have heard about teams and slack how much more they are being used today uh, for teams i can give you some data before the pandemic before april of last year they were at around um i think 20 or 30 million uh, daily users today it is believed they are upwards of 200 million daily users so uh, 100 you know 10 times growth right 900% growth that is and and we are not done yet right there are more people who are jumping into that similarly slack zoom all of them are also seeing more you know people jumping in but teams seems to be seems to have captured vast swath of um, uh, you know uh you know accounts where companies where they don't want to pay extra for collaboration tool and they'll want one and teams has actually captured that space very very well um the second thing is that you know we are all getting used to more technology at home so we are using con conversational interface for our tv for for our by the way tv doesn't get my accent i'm so frustrated with uh, google home i i keep saying my kids laugh at it and i i say something to tv and it shows me something entirely different so uh, you know it doesn't get my accent but but my kids do all right uh, but the conversational interface is here uh, i think we are all getting used to it whether it's your vacuum cleaner to your front uh, porch uh, light to your tv to whatever right so we are getting used to it in cars and outside so the question is this kind of changes the expectations a little bit in employees mind um so so uh, you know the new um uh, you know a model therefore if we kind of add these few things the new model seems to be that uh, you know employees would want to come from a interface a channel collaboration tool of their choice uh, whether it's teams or slack or something like that and they will want to access all their service desk from there and by the way <clears throat> instead of having a long conversation with someone 
if they can get their issue resolved within 10 seconds or 15 seconds, they will love that, right? This seems to be the new construct which has really caught on to the imagination of uh, both the employees and the agents. Why it has caught on? Employees, you know, it's very simple because, you know, they obviously <clears throat> find it convenient. They find like they have a help right next to them whenever they want it. They can access that help um, without any barrier to, you know, to picking up the phone and calling someone. It's really easy. You can go ask a question anytime. There's no amount of stupid questions you can ask. You can ask whatever you want. So it becomes, it makes them feel less isolated, less stressed out, and, and it reduces the enterprise friction. Now, from the agent side or the service desk manager side, it's great because what is happening is a lot of the simple issues are going away. They are being auto-resolved by the system. And, and now you're getting only tickets that needs your attention, right? Not, not, you're not getting all the tickets, but you're getting the tickets that you really need your attention. And, and obviously, you know, needless to say, a lot of this here is conversational AI. So there's, uh, you know, there is, there is bot uh, here, which is answering questions. There's knowledge management, which is supporting the bot. There's a bunch of other things. Now, uh, and, and obviously, let's not forget the amount of automation you can do in solutions like this. So this seems to be the future, uh, but, and if you double click on it, basically there are more functions here. For example, employee can chat with the end user. Employee doesn't have to look at a ticketing system at all. The bot will create the tickets and so on and so forth. So, so the ease for employee goes like uh, amazingly high and, and, and the service desk manager's KPI improve. Um, not only for service desk, by the way, broadly speaking, the conversational interface is, is going to be broad, broader than that, in our opinion. Uh, you, you know, your learning systems within um, enterprise will be conversational based. Actually, we have one. Uh, creating and sharing knowledge, uh, getting everyday tasks done, like booking a meeting, you know, things of that nature. Imagine almost having a personal assistant for each employee which is going to give them support to go through the day and, and get things done. And this is our vision, this is how it is going to be. Um, and, and you know, the new model, and we are going to go talk about architecture very soon. The new model also says incident management is okay, service desk is okay, but employee support and employee enablement is a bigger thing, right? You cannot just say, listen, I provided you a great um, uh, ticketing solution, so you should be happy. Or, okay, you know what? I integrated all your service desk. Now you should be happy. But I think it goes beyond that a little bit because employee support is bigger than that. And employee support includes, you know, are you able to upskill the employee when, when they need it to be? Or do they have all the project management uh, support that they need? Do they have access to enterprise knowledge? There's some amount of knowledge, enterprise knowledge, which is not even part of any service desk, but employees should have access to that, right? So it's, it's if you think of Venn diagram, the solution seems to be a little bit bigger than just a service desk. So this is the desired state, right? This is where we, I have kind of drawn a picture for you from where it is going where and why it is going, what is the, you know, uh, factors that, that are driving this uh, momentum towards a change. Now the question is, what will it take to go there, right? And I'm, today there are multiple aspects to that problem. Today, we are only going to focus on the architecture part, right? Like I'm not going to focus on the cultural part and you know adoption and a bunch of other things. We are going to talk about the architecture part today. Um, so within architecture, if you look at the, uh, you know, the progression of architecture, um, it is started from, you know, on-prem. <laughs> um, most of us had on-prem systems um, two decades ago, um, right? And, and on-prem systems, uh, you know, were an upgrade to, to Excel, of course, right? They, they could do, you know, instead of an Excel, you can now manage your things in, you know, on-prem system, great, you know, uh, it worked out fine for some time. And then around 10 years back, um, you know, um, SaaS-based solutions started to come up, right? More and more SaaS-based solutions started to come up. By 2014, 2015, there were like tons of SaaS-based solutions out there, which are doing the same thing, by the way but they were doing it in cloud their accessibility was better they were you know pricing was better you can just subscribe to it you know a bunch of things right we all know how it went and i think uh, this line i didn't put timelines to this but somewhere around two years back or so i think there's a line to be drawn there because the architecture has fundamentally shifted now 
So from a, you know from a ticketing system on cloud, now I think the new architecture is the AI based architecture, where you know you need a new architecture which is very easy to bring various AI kind of capabilities into the product. And you know all of you I'm sure already you know attend a lot of webinars or other events and you know what i'm talking about largely speaking but let's talk about what does ai mean for service desk and how the progression is going to go so you know clearly most of you would have heard about conversational ai service desk you might have been to our website you already know what it is but from here it keeps going up this is not the end game right there's more ai that is going to come in employee support area uh, and you, you know you will see a lot of innovations coming in here and a lot of companies are working on this space so next thing you are going to see is machine learning issue resolution right so there's an issue resolution slash recommendation engine that is going to tell the agents um, you know what to do in a problem right so it's going to give two or three recommendations based on percentages and it'll say based on what i was able to read about the ticket i didn't resolve this ticket myself but here you go this is what i think should happen so even new agents or newer agents will have something to go on with uh, they will have some you know someone's kind of suggesting to them what to do and stuff like that and they can just based on the session they can just click buttons and and kind of get it done so this is a machine learning based issue resolution uh, recommender that will come um, in my opinion within within a year you will start to see um, you know companies offering that then there's visual ai and and part of this we already do actually so these are some of these are not necessarily in exactly the sequence but uh, visual ai is where we have put them in a sequence in which they will be widely adopted not necessarily in which order they'll be available so visual ai means you know document reading right ability of the bot to read the document ability of the bot to read an image ability of the bot to read a screen um, right, so someone submits a screen, the bot reads the screen, finds out the error, correlates that with which printer you are talking about, and therefore what recommendation needs to be done. That is a that is the kind of uh, location where we are going to reach them. And these technologies are already here, by the way. Right, this is not something I'm telling you, which is futuristic. We cannot be done. It's just a matter of now connecting the dots here. The third one um, is speech and telephony. So remember, you know, we, some of our workforces are already used to just picking up the phone and talking, and uh, you cannot persuade maybe 20% of this workforce to come to a bot. Well, there's going to be telephony and speech-based recognition. You don't even have to do anything in my laptop. I just need to click a button and start talking, and, and the system will then figure out what to do for me. So this is also not too far away, right? So I have tried to, because when people think AI, people think mostly conversational AI. They think this is what AI is. But AI is, has a lot of facets. There's a lot of research going on, right, in AI. And these are the kind of AI that you can expect very well within next one to two years. Most of them will be in production and you guys will be using it. So this is a whole lot of change to consider and, and see. And, and why is this important? Why am I telling you what is going to happen in the future? Because only the products that enable, that depend on us on an AI architecture, which is a different architecture from a typical architecture, will be able to support these quick movements and new, new features coming in and so on and so forth. It's not going to be possible if you're going, uh, if you're based on an older architecture to be able to bring this new magical features based on the demand of the customers uh, very quickly. So, so if you talk about older architecture, just to make a distinction between older architecture and the new architecture. So uh, older architecture is typically rigid. Um, you know, um, I, have, I have been told by a lot of clients where we are replacing other systems. Oh, my system, I don't like it. It sends too many emails. Um, it cannot be configured. They say it is configurable, but it's not really configurable. I had to get more services, partners, et cetera, et cetera. As a matter of fact, um, the simple metrics is if you have bought into one of those larger, uh, you know, um, service desk um, products without naming some of them, if you are spending a dollar on, on the licensing, you are probably going to spend between a dollar to $2 on services on top of it just to use the product. And, and that talks to the rigidity of the product, how rigid they are. 
Second, they don't have, you know, they're not really microservices driven. So the more modern architecture uh, takes each of the components of the, uh, you know, within the product, talk to each other using microservices. So they don't, they, they talk to each other using APIs in other words, right? So they don't, they're not a big monolithic piece of code that has been written that that is single code, right? They are, they, they are things, even if you, uh, create a ticket, for example, is an API call from one module to another module and, and so on and so forth. So advantage of these microservices based uh, products is that they are very easy to change, upgrade and so on and so forth and fit really uh, well. But old, most of the older technologies, even SaaS based are not, um, many of them are not microservices. Still. Third is that a lot of them are not even AI enabled right when i say i talked about a bunch of different kind of ais that are already making place and will be coming soon uh, you need a platform that can actually do bring all that ai to you right you cannot go into research mode for each one of them and take three years to bring by the time you bring those five things it's already 15 years and the market has gone somewhere else so the older architecture will have a struggle because they don't they don't have ai enablement in in their platform um, the next one um, is, you know, um, I'll talk about, um, they're not available in new channels. We were talking about the, you know, Teams and Slack and whatnot. These are new ch latest channels where employees are already they are there. So if you use Teams, your organization use Teams, uh, you probably know that employees are already sitting there uh, on Teams as one of the top three apps every day. So therefore it makes sense to provide the service in that place that channel instead of other and a lot of these older uh, products are really struggling uh, to kind of capture the a sense of and and the problem is not just being able to put the technology in the problem is also mindset a lot of these older companies are not getting the importance uh, that it's not just yet another channel right a lot of them think oh i need uh, maybe i need a channel in teams uh, you know, it's not that, it's not that simple. It's a whole change of mindset and that's where some of them will struggle. Then integration, this is a big thing because, you know, while your service desk can do a good thing of tracking the issues on its own, it is almost meaningless in today's world if the system cannot talk to uh, 50 other enterprise systems that you have to kind of coordinate, to kind of, you know, manage workflows to, to you know, and and traditional systems have struggled. I mean, I I look at how they have just barely managed to integrate with HR now, right? Because employee onboarding, employee offboarding is very important, and they just barely made made it now. And they're like, oh great, we did great, we integrated with HR system. So what? There, apart from HR, there are you know uh, fifty other systems where you know uh, the a workflow and a process might take take you, right? So again, their solution is, listen, talk to our service provider, they will help you integrate. So that is the old way of thinking, and this is not going to work. And, and finally, automation seems to be so difficult for these traditional systems due to the architectural, the way the architecture is written, that if you want to do any big automation, that means you have to spend, you know, if you want to do automation to gain X dollars, you probably have to spend three X dollars upfront, and you'll have to calculate ROI. So automation is not easy. Right. And one thing I really, the word that I want to associate with automation is easy, easy automation. There is literally no other way of automation that is worth it because, you know, we have all done those nine month projects costing $750,000 and, you know, they're useless. They don't even prove the ROI at the end of the day. So these are the challenges with, you know, older architecture, the new architecture, by the way, they are always low code or no code. That means you, be, you know, you don't have to do much uh, in order to, you know, uh, get things done and and uh, do easy automation. I was calling you. They are plug and play. They are microservices driven. I won't repeat it. I already talked about how microservices are very important. Third, they are AI enabled. That means they live in an ecosystem where there is plenty of AI and they can leverage the AI from the ecosystem where they live. So. Um, the, the the way it is going to work out is each of these companies are not going to develop their entire AI. Nobody can, right? I mean, leave Microsoft, Google, and and um, you know uh, AWS. Apart from that, nobody is going to be able to develop their all the AI in house, right? So therefore, the smarter of these companies are going to leverage what is out there 
and 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 uh, you know incorporate that in such a way that the end user benefit and that is what i call ai enablement and therefore the advantage here is that you can capture 10 more uh, you know new technologies but you don't have to code all those 10 new technologies so you can potentially play in an ecosystem where you can bring new changes to the customer you very very easily and that is very very important for someone to consider how this is being done then personalization this i cannot you know talk about this enough um, does your service desk treat each person slightly differently and give them personalized responses personalized automation personalized experience uh, and that is so difficult to achieve in the traditional ecosystem because they literally live on an island and they don't integrate with the rest of the system so they don't understand how how who you are right so if manish sharma comes and ask a question versus someone else comes and you know how do i treat them differently and in a personalized way which is meaningful that is a big thing a lot of customers ask for that by the way once they get to know um, you know mark my words personalization is pretty big in service desk and you are going to see more and more people asking uh, and demanding that uh, you know feature and that needs to be configured so your product needs to be able to configure personalized uh, solutions uh, so that is I strongly believe that's part of new AI architecture. The next one is available in new channels. And, you know, I've been talking about Teams, Slacks, and so on and so forth. So your product should be available in new channels for, for it to um, kind of, you know, uh, make sense to the new age of uh, service desk. And finally, and by the way, it's not just available in new channels, but these channels might be central to your thinking right uh, it's it's one thing to say i will make it available on teams another thing to say that i am team centric i understand what is happening in teams ecosystem i know what teams uh, new new advances are coming what microsoft is doing new features are coming and i will be the one who will be able to give you the best solution out there that is being centric team centric as opposed to a lot of these larger companies which are saying oh i can just you know what people seem to be asking for teams so you know what okay I heard them give them a team sir. That's that's not it. That's not absolutely not there. And finally, the pre-built integration. I've been talking about how you need to play in the ecosystem. And any new architecture has to be really easy on integrating with anything. So, for example, as you may client work with Ultipro in HR, they work with ADP, they work with the uh, you know uh, oracle they work with sap they work with uh, some student services uh, you know software right how can you leverage the information and the uh, you know uh, and the processes around you to make things happen that is very important and i increasingly believe that is a job of service desk so having now kind of laid down what kind of architecture is a different architecture new architecture let's talk about the cost of transition right uh, and who's going to pay so this is important because you know i think most of you might agree by this time that yes we need new architecture we need a uh, you know so so there are two ways to do it obviously right one is you know your older traditional software will upgrade it but the question is how what what happens there there's some challenge for the old uh, traditional systems to upgrade to the new one right one is uh, and I will put this as number one, absolutely number one, which is culture. Uh, you have a culture in a company, you have a way of thinking. Um, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of audience here also, you know, each organization is the same. So you know how difficult it is to manage change, right? To get everyone to rally towards the one direction and so on and so forth. Some existing employees might have some, you know, they love particular module, they love particular, they have a point of view and oh my God, you know, this, the 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 human side of it is perhaps the most difficult but not to say that the architecture part is easy too right because you literally will have to probably write a code from from the scratch you'll have to uh, have a new approach and so on and so forth so you're literally creating a new uh, software in the same place so so that's that's a challenge it's not an easy thing to do and finally the cost consideration how much will these companies spend Right. Uh, so one of the largest company, and again, I'll not name, they've already bought three, uh, uh, they, they bought three chatbot companies, three. If you, it's a public company, you can look it up. They bought in quick succession in last two or three years, three chatbot companies. <laughs> 
and they chat yeah, and they still don't have ai functionality down so sure there is willing to spend money so it depends really right like how do you th there'll be cost to doing this and and obviously some companies have you know bigger pockets and some don't so what does it mean to you as as a customer right like if you if you're thinking about this change if you're wondering how i'm going to go to a better service delivery model how i'm going to increase my kpis how do i bring my employees the next generation of employee experience how do i think of a of a, you know service desk uh, in bigger terms right not just okay i solved your it help desk problem but bigger terms how do i do that right um, the the way is you know there are three costs to you if you don't do anything one is obviously you will have delay in accessing new technology you will not have new technology you will therefore not have the new service delivery model and and that is a cost right that's an opportunity cost real opportunity cost um, and this opportunity cost is you know in multiple ways it comes i'll talk in the next slide but there's a cost to you second is if you are transitioning through architecture with with your vendor then you are going to go through with some pain the pain like i said in the last slide that the vendor will go through you are going to go through that pain so it's painful for you as well and lastly cost of transition um, being passed on uh, right if, if there's a lot of cost of transition some of it might come your way so there might be monetary implication as well so the point i'm trying to make is and and i'm not saying that by default there's no company which can figure this out uh, i'm sure there are some of the existing companies which are going to pivot and they're going to do it very well but there is a risk associated with the traditional companies pivot and the cost being you know you you got to think what is your cost in doing that and finally why does it matter to you personally right if i if i kind of talk about you know we talked about broadly but what does it matter to you so one you know end user expectations as i mentioned earlier in the presentation are already changed you cannot help it that genie is out of the bottle so they are looking everywhere they're talking to their friends colleagues and and they are figuring out that some other companies are providing better service and that is a pressure that is going to keep increasing on you right people are going to come senior management is going to go see something in a conference they'll come to you and say hey why are you not doing this right so there will be bet more pressure on you as the time goes on by the way every month right every month the second is um, you know um, you are missing an opportunity uh, to upgrade your service desk because if you don't upgrade your service desk then and the associated you know benefits that come with it the leadership that you are displaying the uh, the uh, the transformation figure that you are becoming for the company you are just letting it go if you don't do it for one more year you are letting the initiative go away from you uh, and uh, who knows next year who's going to do that so the, i think that is a personal you know risk for anyone who's not doing anything to be honest and and finally i think there's a bigger picture here that service desk in my humble opinion and this is maybe a radical idea but i don't think that the it operations group in five years will do what they are doing today today what are they doing they are providing service to the employees and they're solving tickets i don't think in five years successful service desk are going to be doing that they will do that of course right with the help of technology but they will become the automation hub for the company that means if finance needs some automation they're going to come to service desk and say you seem to have the right technology and tools to do it you have the right expertise we saw you uh, you know automating your service desk can you help me automate my expense management or can you help me create a process flow here so you remember the dpm function that used to be there which was almost almost always outsourced and at great expense and great slow uh, i mean amazingly slow projects i now i think back and i cannot fathom how that industry survived but listen that is going to change and i think the service desk people will kind of start taking internal projects and drive the internal automation agenda and that's a great news for uh, service desk leaders so that's how i look at it this is the this is why this architecture discussion matters for enterprise leaders and service desk leaders and and i think uh, this is something that you should be looking into right away um, because it matters to you and it it will it, it is not stopping it's not something that you can ignore it's happening right now everywhere um, very very quickly so hopefully i mean i know we we didn't um, you know uh, we could have gone probably in more detail but 
feel free to reach out to us individually if you want to like double click on the architecture or something like that uh, but um, i hope this was added some value to you i'm uh, open to some question and answers and see if some questions uh, out there that i can answer for people i see a question that has come in for me um, and the question is how soon can we expect other ai changes to come so i think um, um the gentleman who has asked this question is referring to um you know this slide if i'm not wrong this slide and i think what they're asking is if conversational ai is already here when do you think uh, this is going to happen how soon right i truly believe um that the technology is here this is ready um but i truly believe by early next year you will start to see when you go to a conference next year you will start to see demos for all of them right you will see speech telephony and visual ai maybe in a year or so uh, you know and and you will the you know a lot of people will start to adopt in 2022 so some of this is already here and some of this will be adopted in 2022 but i don't think i'm talking anything beyond 2022 here right i mean for me by the way personally it's very difficult to see three years away because things are changing so fast that you cannot see three years away or five years again i don't know how people used to plan for five years earlier but uh, that is almost an impossible proposition at this point of time so as far as we can see this is this is how um, we see any other questions Well, if there are no other questions, um, uh, looks like uh, we might be able to give you your um, 20 minutes back. I uh, really appreciate a um, lot of people joined in today from different parts of the world. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And feel free to stop by our website, um, book a demo or, or um, have a discussion with us. Thank you so much.